Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, many years ago, I was with a group of friends. Tapos nag-attend kami ng event together. And in that event, meron pa games. Mga fun, fun games lang. Saran sa mga games na sumali kami basically, or pinasali kami, is Paint Me a Picture. Alam niyo yung game na yun? Paint Me a Picture. So may scenario na ibibigay. Tapos yung group, basically, you have to act out using your bodies, using your actions. Yung kung ano man yung picture, di ba, na, na kailangan ni portray, in a sense na mahuhulaan nung judge or kung sino man yung nagde-decide kung ano yung picture niya. So for example, paint me a picture of a basketball game. So pwedeng yung isa dyan, gaganon, siya yung ring, di ba? Yung iba dyan, nangaharang, yung iba dyan, yung magdad- magdadunk, yung iba yung nagtitsir, ganyan. So that was the game. Very simple. Very simple. Sabi sa amin nung host, okay, Paint me a picture of Last Supper. Last Supper. So, okay, Last Supper daw. Tingin kami sa isa't isa. Plano na kagad kami. Sino po pwesto? Dapat may Jesus na gitna. Ganyan. Naka, medyo naka-squat. Para ako naman, naka-upo. Diba? May table, ganyan. Tapos yung, yung ibang, ibang kasama. Ganyan. Naka-pwesto, ganyan. Ganyan, ganyan. Okay, so, pwesto na kami. Last Supper. Yung isa kong kaibigan, isa kong kagrupo, medyo naguluhan ako kasi yung action niya, gumunan siya sa gilid. Gumunan siya. Sabi ko, alam mo, iniisip ko yung, yung scenario ng Last Supper. Parang wala namang devil dun sa Last Supper. Sigurado ako wala. Ayan, so medyo magulang kami sa kanya. Basta nandun siya sa gilid, gumagano siya, ganyan-ganyan. Agad sa pinastop na kami, tapos hindi maintindihan kung ano yung picture namin. Basically, hindi kami nanalo dahil dun sa ano na yun. After noon, nakausap-usap kami. Tinanong niya kami, sabi niya, ano ginagawa niyo? Bakit kayo, ano, 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 yung, ano yung ano yung action na ginagawa niyo? Sumagot kami, sabi namin, Last Supper, ikaw anong ginagawa mo? Tinignan niya kami, sabi niya, ah, Last Supper. Akala ko, grasshopper. Sabi ko, kaya pala may nakaganon. <laughs> Ang labo nga naman eh, no? But you know, that's how it is. Ang hirap talaga pag hindi tayo nagkakaintindihan. Mahirap talaga pag yung sinasabi natin, hindi nagmamatch dun sa actions natin. Or yung actions natin, hindi nagagampanan kung ano yung mga dapat nating sinasabi, ano yung mga gusto nating sabihin. Misunderstandings or miscommunication is, is a source of many disagreements, a source of many problems, a source of many false expectations. And I think it's one thing for us to experience that with one another, with our friends, with our family members. But sometimes, we also experience that with God. Right? Minsan, yung mga ginagawa si Lord, yung may sinasabi si Lord, or may, may nire-reveal si Lord, hindi natin nagigits, hindi natin naiintindihan. Actually, hindi tayo nag-iisa dyan. Looking at the past talks that we've been having through the Gospel of John, we've been seeing examples of different people encountering Jesus. Jesus revealing something to them and them being confused about what it means. What it means for them, what it means for His ministry, what it means about who He is. Sometimes they accept it, sometimes they reject it, but there is often confusion. It's not always clear. It's not always easy to understand. It's not always easy to accept. But, even if we may struggle sometimes in recognizing God's voice, even if we may struggle sometimes with understanding where He's leading us or what He's trying to show us or how He's trying to reveal Himself to us, even if minsan mahirap intindihin yung salita ni Lord, one thing is for sure. It is that He can be trusted. 
It is that He doesn't want us confused. It's just that sometimes we're not ready. It's just that sometimes it's too much for us. It's just that sometimes we don't see the big picture yet. We don't see the whole picture yet. Or sometimes, like my friend, we mishear. Ah, hindi pala yun yung message ni Lord. Iba pala yung message ni Lord. But even if, again, even if sometimes it's difficult for us to understand what God is revealing in our lives, the good thing that we can rely on, that we can depend on, is that God can be trusted. That He is not out to deceive us. That He wants what is best for us. He does not want us confused. He does not want us lost. He does not want us disunified. But He is patient with us. He bears with us. He reveals Himself slowly to us. Sometimes in ways na feeling natin di pa tayo ready for, but I'm sure He knows better. It says in John 17, verse 3, these are the words of Jesus. Eternal life is this, to know you. That, that's what Jesus said. Eternal life is to know you, the only true God, and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. God actually wants us to know Him. And so sometimes, even if we struggle, let's approach Him boldly, with courage, with trust, knowing that even if it's difficult, we are being invited and we are being accompanied all the way through. Amen? Amen. And so with that boldness in our hearts, let us come together and pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Let's sing to His Word. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's give Him the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One of the things that we do here at Feast Bellevue PM, all right, before you take your seats, is something that we call Minute Mingle. And so to start this off, okay, we want to encourage you to get to know someone around you. Pwedeng sa harap mo, sa likod mo, sa gilid mo. Take this one minute to introduce yourself to one another and take turns answering this one simple question. Simple lang talaga ang tanong natin for today. Ready na ba kayo? Hindi pa yun yung tanong. Okay, ito yung tanong. <laughs> One minute, take turns answering this question. Kumusta ang undas mo? Anong ginawa niyo? Alright? So for one minute, introduce yourself and answer that question together. Ten seconds. Uh, 
All right. Time is up. You may take your seats. Pakisalamatan si partner. Thank you, partner. <laughs> okay ba ang ondas nyo this year? Sino ang nakapagpahinga? Sino ang wish nila nakapagpahinga sila? Ayan, mas marami. <laughs> Okay lang yan. Okay lang. Let's rest in God's word today. Yes? Amen. Hello everyone. My name is Mon. Can I get a hi, Brother Mon? It's good to be here with you and welcome to Feast Bellevue PM. Pwede pakisabi sa katabi, welcome home. Can I see the hands of all of you who are joining us for the first time today? First time mag-feast? Pakitaas ang kamay. Eh, palakpakan natin sila. Thank you for being here with us. Please keep your arms raised so that we could give you your welcome gift. Ayan, meron tayong mga welcome gift especially for you. Ayan, keep your hands raised. Baka hindi kayo makita. Right, right, right. After this session, we, we would like to get to chat with you some more. Please do drop by outside sa ating First Timers Corner when we go out already after the whole thing. Ayan. You're also very much welcome to join us again next Sunday. And we're happy, we're so happy that you are here with us today. Because today is the first Sunday of November. Patapos na ang taon. Right? Can you believe that? Malapit na. Isang buwan na lang, December na ulit. Di ba? Ilang Christmas parties na naman ang pagdadaanan natin. Ilang exchange gifts. <laughs> I hope you're excited for that. And I hope you're excited also for today's word because today we're going to be continuing on our series through the Gospel of John and to preach our message for this afternoon I would like to help I would like to ask you to help me welcome our speaker for today he's one of the most uh, what would you call this dedicated and consistent people that I know yeah, let us all welcome here on the stage our leader and our builder, Brother Mike Vinyas. Thank you very much, Brother Mon. Sobrang excited ako dun sa Minute Mingle question mo. Akala ko, itatanong mo, ano ang paborita mong snack sa cementerio? Ganyan. But yeah, I'd, I hope and pray that you did have a good All Saints and All Souls Day. Who among you had hot dog in the cemetery? Ayan, ayan, sila. Ako nagkape. Anyway, that's not nothing to do completely with our message today. Are you ready? So, a few weeks ago when I preached the talk on the wedding in Cana, I remember showing you some pictures from our wedding. And one of those pictures that I shared with you was this photo. Can we show them? Ayan. This was part of our reception where Ve and I had a moment where we decided we wanted to have um, a washing of the feet ceremony. We, we, we thought of that to really actualize our commitment to serve one another. So, nung moment na yun, talagang feel na feel namin na hinuhugasan namin yung mga kanya-kanyang paa, ganyan. But I tell you, since then, that hasn't happened again. <laughs> Of course, I'm kidding because that hasn't happened, at least the foot washing part, literally. But I think the service, the sacrifice towards one another has happened in so many ways. In fact, in the eight years that we've married, we've been married, I have witnessed how Vea has just been so faithful in dying to herself to serve me and our family. So just give me a few moments to just share with you some of the small and maybe big things, small and big things that she has done out of love, out of service for myself and for Kyler. I remember many times pag pagod na ako and I still have to drive, she would offer to drive for me, even if alam niyang matatraffic kami. And she would do that gladly. Yung mga talk ko sa feast, Ay, grabe, tinutulungan niya talaga ako dyan para makapag-isip ng stories, illustrations, and jokes just to really make it relevant and engaging to listen to. In fact, pag merong kayong naririnig sa akin jokes, tapos natawa kayo, most likely sa kanya galing yun. At yung jokes na mga hindi kayo nat natatawa, kay Brother Mon galing yun. De, biro lang, <laughs> biro lang, brother. Sa akin galing yun. 
And then there would be times na kahit busy na busy siya, she would offer to do my slides for, for my talks. Grabe yan talaga. In fact, and, and maybe you're not privy to this, if you remember last week, she already led worship. But today, she led worship again because hindi available yung worship leader and I think wala nang ibang matap. So ang naglead ng worship, si Eddie. Si Eddie ikaw, di ba? Si Eddie ako. So can we just give her a big hand for just her love and sacrifice? And it's not just with me, it's not just with ministry, even with our son, Kyler. Grabe yan. She, kahit pagod na yan, kahit busy, she would find the time to really play with Kyler. Ako kasi pag naglalaro na kami ni Kyler, parang end of the day, pagod na ako. Yung hindi na ako ganun ka-animated. Siya parang buhay na buhay pa. Talagang gumagalaw lahat ng bagay. To really just engage with my son, teach him, at to make sure, to make sure, ah, sige, make you ako dyan. But anyway, just keep it there. She made sure that Kyler is well set up for, her, for his school and activities in school. So case in point, this past October, in one month, kinarir ng asawa ko yung costume ng anak ko. Tatlong beses. Okay? On the right, pi- uh, Captain Kyler as a pirate. <laughs> Captain Kyler. Um, for a trick or treat. Kena mama, no? Kena mama. And then, this was UN Day in their school. So, he was assigned Colombia. Iniisip ko noong una, bibihisan ko siyang Pablo Escobar, di ba? Because he's the top businessman of the top exporting commodity. <laughs> I'm kidding. And then this was trick or treat in their school as a firefighter. So, Veya, I just want to take this moment to really just thank you for all you do, all that you give up for our family. Oh, happy birthday, Nadinya birthday. <laughs> as for me, on my end of washing your feet, I pray that I will continue to commit by the grace of God to also be selfless and to serve you and Kyler and perhaps another child sacrificially in Jesus' name. Hindi ko pa buksan yung notes ko. Ano? Amen. Now, all of that to say this, that each and every one of us has this unique ability, has this gifted ability to really forgo ourselves, to die to ourselves and commit to love and serve one another. Why? Because it was first modeled to us by Jesus. He himself washed the feet of his apostles. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. With that, welcome back to our series, Come and See. Galing no, yung kanta natin kanina, Come and See. And yung series din natin is Come and See. And we're going through this um, Bible study, actually, of the Gospel of John. And today, we're at Talk 8. And we're going to take a macro view. Everybody say macro. We're going to take a macro view of John chapter 13 to 17, where we will find three significant, very crucial moments in the life of Jesus. And those are, can we show them? Number one, as I mentioned, the foot washing. Second, the betrayal. And then lastly, his last speech. Jesus' final words to his apostles. And all of that happens, as I said, throughout those chapters. And, and all of that actually happens in one venue. All of that happens in one place, and that is the upper room. So it was an eventful evening, actually, for all of this to take place. And that night, with all those three things happening, started with these words. Are you with me? In John chapter 13, verse 1. Let's read it together. Let's have it on screen. Three, two, one, go. Before the feast of Passover, come on, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. Everybody say, hour. So all throughout the Gospel of John, ilang beses na sinasabi ni Jesus yan? Hour, that term. In fact, it began in the wedding of Cana, and all throughout, he would mention it 16 times again, saying things like, my hour has not yet come, or that hour, or the hour is coming. At this point of the narrative, at this point of the Gospel, the hour has come. The hour has finally arrived. Eto na. This is it. And what does this hour mean? It means that this is the start of Jesus' ordeal 
towards the cross. You can think of it this way. It is the beginning of the end for him. So we are somehow closing in to not just the end of the series, but the culmination of the life of Jesus. So here, Jesus is saying, Ito na guys, this is it. Jesus is about to do his greatest act, his ultimate expression of love, his total self-giving to us all. And then John says this in John chapter 13, verse 1. He said, He loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. Everybody say, Love them to the end. Another way of saying is this is that he loved them to its fullest extent. Right? In other words, Jesus will do anything and everything to love you. To love us and he actually did because on the cross he poured out 100% of himself to each and every one of us not leaving anything to himself he gave it all for you he gave it all for me for all of us and all of humanity amen in fact this reminds me of this children's storybook that I pray one day I get to share with Kyler and it's a story can we show them it's a story by Sam McBranty entitled, Guess How Much I Love You. Any of you know the story? Some parents do, okay? I will do my best to reenact it with some acting as well. So let me just share with you a simplified version. So one day, see si Little Rabbit, I playing with Papa Rabbit, and then Natigilan siya stops and says, Daddy? Guess how much I love you. And the father listens and he says, with his small rabbit arm, says, This is how much I love you. And the father responds, Oh, wow. This is how much I love you. And the little rabbit says, Wow. That's so much, daddy. Napaisip siya bigla. Paano niya tatalunin yun? Eh, mas mahaba yung mga arms ni Daddy. So sabi niya, Daddy, he stands, so, so little rabbit stands up, reaches his hands as high as he can, tiptoes, and says, Daddy, this is how much I love you. At least this is how I imagined it to be. So bear with me, okay? This is how much I love you. And the father says, Oh, oh wow, thank you. And the father stands up, and then raises his hands as much. And because he's higher and taller, he says, this is how much I love you, towering over the little rabbit. Then at some point, the little rabbit said, Daddy, trying to be clever, trying to be wise over his dad. Daddy, I love you all the way to the river. And the father said, well, son, I love you all the way to the hills. Then at some point after one um, response after another, napagod na si Little Rabbit. Alam niya parang hindi ako, man, hindi ako manat, mananalo dito. Ah. <laughs> parang, and then so he said, or sorry, eventually, Little Rabbit grew tired and was sleepy. So, Daddy placed him on the, Daddy Rabbit placed him on the grass, and as he was about to fall asleep, humirit pa si Little Rabbit, hindi pa nagpatalo, sabi niya, Daddy, I love you all the way to the moon. And then he fell asleep. And daddy whispers, Son, I love you all the way to the moon and back. Friends, that story sounds so cute. But I tell you, there is nothing cute about what Jesus did on the cross for us. For it is on the cross where Jesus stretched wide his arms and said, This is how much I love you. Jesus loves us to the very end. And so friends, no matter what you've done in your life, no matter if you think you've done everything to deserve His love, or maybe you think you don't deserve His love at all, let me tell you, 
you cannot, you cannot outlove God, nor can you, um, nor can you, or nor can He fall in out of love for you, because again, Jesus loves us to the very end. Now, at this point, I want to go into the first event of what happened in this night, and Jesus kicks off this evening with a very common you would say, ritual of hospitality na madalas na ginagawa during that time and it's practiced in whenever you enter one's home, right? And I'm talking about the first event, the washing of the dirty, muddy, smelly feet. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Ganyan ba yung paa niyan? You know, in my lifetime, and I'm 37 now, I think I may, I don't count, pero possibly I have already visited maybe hundreds of homes. But never once did I ever hear from the host say, Mike, have your feet washed. Never. Meron sa iba sa inyo na experience na ba nun? Okay, see, see little girl over there. <laughs> no? Okay. But anyway, I never have experienced it. But during the time of Jesus, this was a common practice. In fact, if the house during that time, if the house you visited and the host was extra wealthy, they would have servants who had different roles in their household. And part of that was feet washing. So they would have servant number one, siya yung mayordomo, siya yung head of the staff. Okay? Servant number two is your personal assistant, your secretary. Servant number three would be um, the skilled workers, the cooks, the gardeners, and the like. And then servant number four, underneath all of that, is the servant who is tasked to do undesirable tasks. And part of that was to wash the feet of guests. So just imagine that. Okay? So that is something that many, or not, if not all, um, would do when someone enters their house back in the time of Jesus. So, I say undesirable because this was not like the symbolic ceremony that we would have during Holy Thursday. Di ba pag Holy Thursday may washing of the feet, di ba sa parokya? Or it's not like that symbolic gesture that we did in our own wedding. Because remember, the times were different then. And I'll tell you why later. But I remember... Yung mga iba, di ba? Who among you here have been tapped to be one of the apostles pag Holy Thursday? Na nahugasan na ng paa. Bro, yeah, okay. See, brother. And who else? Ayan. Alright, several. There. Thank you. So, may narinig ako one time na nung natap siya na maging apostle for Holy Thursday, talagang nag-schedule pa siya ng nails pa, ng, ng foot pa, para lang siguradong malinis yung paa niya bago hinawakan ni Father. Ganon. In fact, ako, hindi, hindi ko naman yan, but I think I've been an apostle once or twice. I just had to cut my long toenails. And it could be notoriously long at times. Uh, my wife knows this. So I had to cut it just to make sure that before Father comes, it's all clean. So to us, it's just for show. Okay? It's not so undesirable. But in the time of Jesus, remember, nung panahon na yun, there were no paved roads. So everything and everywhere that they went, that they did, was muddy. Ay, maputik. Plus, they didn't have closed shoes. All of them more or less wore open-toe sandals. So if you will wash someone's feet during that time, you will really smell the dirt, the bacteria, the fungus, the aliponga, lahat. It was that gross to wash someone's feet. And here's what happens in our story, all right? Are you still with me, yes? yes. Verses 2 to 5 in John chapter 13. It says there, So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into His power and that He had come from God and was returning to God, He rose from supper and took off His outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around His waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. 
So can you just imagine this moment? Can you just imagine how shocking to the apostles this moment was? Because it was not servant number four who was usually a slave that washed the dirt of these apostles' feet. It was the master of the house that held that dirty, grimy, filthy feet of the apostles and washed it clean. So all of them was a shock, were, were shocked because of this. Let me give you a, a modern-day parallel to this, perhaps. So imagine you are working in a factory of a huge multinational company. One day you come to work, on that morning, you find out that the big boss, yung may are, the head of that whole multinational company, is coming to that factory. In fact, after a few moments when you timed in, you see his car, his Benz, drive by um, the factory. And then he goes down with his black suit, black tie, and then he actually sees you and he says, Hi! Ikaw, pag lang nashock ka, na-starstruck ka ng konti, napahay ka rin ng sandali. But then, he turns his eyes, his attention from you to now your feet. And he does the unthinkable. Head of company, black suit, black tie, kneels down before you and says, your shoes are untied. I'll tie them for you. And he ties it. And you, you, parang nahiya ka bigla, parang pinigilan mo po siya, huwag mo gagawin yan, huwag mo gagawin yan. Sir, okay na po, okay na po, nahiya ka. But he does it anyway. That was the feeling of the apostles. In fact, Peter, we won't read it anymore, but Peter actually hesitated for Jesus to do that for him. Peter hesitated and he said this. Oh, sorry, Peter hesitated, but Jesus said this. What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. So Jesus washing the feet of the apostles was a powerful experiential picture of the extent of God's love. And so my friends, I want you to think about this. When Jesus washed the feet of these apostles, that is the same God who created the universe, the Holy One who parts seas and skies. He is the creator of it all, and He is the God, the King of both heaven and earth, and yet He did not mind to dirty His hands and wash the feet of His dearly beloved apostles. My friends, that is the God that we serve, that is the God we worship, and that is the God that we follow. That even in spite of our filth, of our nothingness compared to Him, He is willing to bend down, to come down to us and love us. Amen. Jesus is our God who loves us to the very end, even washing the filthy parts of our lives just to show how much or the extent of his love for us. Amen? But this wasn't just an expression of divine love. It is an expression or rather a call. Everybody say call. It is a call to intimate divine love. And this is what I mean by this. See, this foot washing moment really expressed or showed God's ultimate desire for humanity. That Jesus wants to reverse our social structure. By doing that, he was pretty much displaying or giving an illustration to the apostles of how he wanted to reverse or turn upside down our social constructs or our social structure. See, in a typical society, alam naman natin to, in a typical society, it's the powerless that serves the powerful. But in the kingdom of God, in the community of Christ followers, it is the powerful that Jesus calls to serve 
the powerless. It is the rich that Jesus calls that to serve the poor. Because to Jesus, seniority is not about superiority, but about servanthood. I remember, and I think I've shared with you this many times before, but I just thought of sharing this to you again because it really paints, I think, at least for me, um, a good illustration of what Jesus is talking about here, of turning things upside down, of this whole service structure that he wants to happen for all of us. So 12 years ago, I think I was still employed in my corporate job then. Gising ako, and I was rushing to go to work. Because I think I woke up late, mali late na ako. So I came running out of the house. As I was running out of the house, my dad, who was still alive then, he stops me and says, Anak, because it was a corporate, so corporate attire, leather shoes and all. He said, Anak, papasok ka sa trabaho na madumi yung sapatos mo. And he noticed it because medyong, it was muddy and it was not as clean as it should be. And so I said, Oh, daddy, nagmamadali na kasi ako. Hindi na ako nakapaglinis. Busy kasi talaga. And so he said, Sige, dyan ka lang sandali. He goes back to the house. And here I am, nagmamadali na, nag-complain pa ako. Sabi ko, Dad, sige na, I have to go. Um, uh, I, I, I can't stay for long. I really have to go. Mali late ako. And so, out of the house, he comes running with a basahan on his hand. He comes running to my feet, bows down, bends down um, to my feet, to my dirty leather shoes, and he starts to wipe it clean. And I can remember to this day that moment where I was standing like this and he was there and my heart just exploded. Because in that moment, I felt his love for me. That as a father, as the head of the household, he did not mind stooping down, bending down to the ground to clean my dirty feet. Friends, in the foot washing that Jesus did, he shows us that loving people ought to be concrete, ought to be practical. And so I want to ask you today, let me ask you, as a parent, as co-parents, how are we treating our children? As bosses at work, how we, are we treating our staff? Or even as employees, how do we treat our, our new hires, our interns? or whatever position of power or leadership you are on, how are you caring for the people under you? Because Jesus calls us not to lord it over them or to have power over them, but then Jesus asks us to serve them. Am I making sense? Yes? In fact, I want to push this even further, that we ought not to demand for authority but to actually use it to serve people. Yes? Amen. So that's the first event, the washing of the feet. The second event is this. Oh, sorry, I was supposed to read a passage. Sige, can we go back to that? Thank you. I should read that because it will give context. I went to the story right away. So here it is. John 13, 12 to 16, it says there, Do you realize what I have done for you. You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, Jesus is saying, for indeed I am. If therefore the master and teacher have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. First event. Second event is this. And I want to ask you this question first, if you may somehow piece it in your mind. So foot washing, foot washing of the apostles. Do you know who else was present in that moment? Among the apostles, Judas, right? Judas was present in that moment and yes, Jesus washed the feet of Judas, who he knew 
would eventually betray him. Just think about that. In fact, kung ako si Jesus, parang knowing na he will betray me, I, I will just probably have skipped him. Parang hindi ko siya, I, I will pretend na hindi ko siya nakita. Or even if he says, ako naman, ako naman, ako naman, I would say, ay, naubos na ng tubig eh. Yung parang ganun. As in, hindi ko talaga gagawin yun. But yet, Jesus, knowing already Judas's devious intentions, Jesus did not condemn him. Jesus did not reject him. He could have easily told Judas, okay, because you're gonna do this, you're out of the team, just get out. Get out. Don't, you're not part of this anymore. No. But Jesus honored Judas. How? Check out what he said in verse 26. He said, So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. Now, how is that honoring? Let me give you some context. So number one, Jesus first washes the feet of Judas. That's something. That's already honoring. Number two, Jesus had Judas sit beside him in this Last Supper. I don't have time to explain it anymore, but if you look uh, deeply into that whole passage, you will somehow imagine the, the placement of the apostles there. So Judas was right beside Jesus. And then third, Jesus gives bread to Judas. And during that time, if a rabbi gives bread to his disciple, to his follower, that is a gesture of honor. You can liken it to, um, who among you watches here K-drama? K-drama fans, let's go, yeah, okay. Sa K-drama, di ba, may mga scenes na yung chairman would pour soju on the employer's shot glass, or a father would do that to the son, or... You get the picture? That is somewhat what's happening here. It's a gesture of honor when Jesus did that. So we can really say that Jesus saw the goodness in Judas, that he honored that, right? In fact, the unspoken message here, I think if you read between the lines, is that Jesus is saying, Judas, this isn't you. I know you. Kilala kite. Hindi kato, you are better than this. You don't have to do this. You're better than this. And this reminds me of how, as parents, Bea and I would talk to Kyler these days. Because we're in the season now that Kyler does not like to share anything, okay? Like, for example, he doesn't like to share food. So, minsan, mahikitikim ako, anak, pwede ba ako tumikim, pwede ba ako kumuha ng konti? Sabi niya, no, daddy, I don't like, hindi pwede. Sa loob-loob ko, ako nga bumili ng pagkain mo na yan eh. Ayaw mo ko bigyan. And he doesn't like also to share his toys. Case in point, last Sunday, naglalaro silang magpipinsan yung mga anak ni Brother Veldin. Magkakasama sila naglalaro. May mga dalang toys yung anak ko. Gusto ng mga pinsan niya, laruin yung mga toys ni Kyler. Si Kyler, ang sinasabi niya, to divert their attention, they would, he, he would say, let's just play hide and seek. Mag hide and seek na lang tayo. Loko rin tong anak ko eh. Di ba? Ayaw lang niya palaro yung mga laruan niya. So, in instances like this, we, Bay and I would really pull him aside, really talk to him and say, Anak, remember you are a good boy. And good boy, good boys share what they have. Because sharing is caring. You are better than this. We would tell him. And so, my friends, whenever you are tempted to sin or to do something wrong or to do something hurtful, don't, don't flirt with temptation anymore. Don't play around with the idea in your head. Rather, run away. Run to God for help. And you will come to Him and you will hear Him saying, Anak, yang kasalanan, hindi yan bagay sayo. Yang kasalanan, pangit yan para sa'yo. Because you are very good. So let your goodness shine through you. Amen? Kabi mo sa katabi mo, tigil mo na yan.
Tigil mo na yung kasalanan mo. Hindi yan bagay sa'yo. You are better than this. Amen? Now, pag sinasabi nating apostles, madalas we often perhaps relate easily to the likes of Peter, Thomas, John, but never did I ever hear someone say, alam mo, nakaka-relate ako kay Judas. Di ba? Parang he's the least of them all in our eyes. We never say na, okay, I can connect with Judas. But the author of John, okay, is asking this bone-chilling question to you and to me. And he's asking this, are you like Judas? That after even experiencing the radical love of Jesus, you still went on to do what you did and took matters into your own hands. See, Judas here, in verse 30, it says there, he took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. Everybody say night. Most of the time, or more often than not, when that term night is mentioned in the Gospel of John, it's not just an indication of chronological time. Hindi lang yan para sabihin, okay, it, it, it time stamp of when this happened. No. It is symbolic. And it would mean usually a crisis is happening or difficulty is taking place. So in this verse, many believed that when night was mentioned and Judas left and took off, Judas eventually succumbed to the darkness. Nandilim na yung pag-iisip niya. So, we know the story. He eventually betrays Jesus, sells Jesus to the unjust religious leaders for them to arrest Jesus and eventually crucify him. And Judas plotted all of that. So because of Judas, Jesus became the foot washer that God betrayed. And so the life of Judas is a warning to us all. See, Jesus, sorry, Judas was already in the light. So musunod na siya kay Jesus. He was already a follower. He knew the teachings. He knew what it was like to follow Jesus. He was already in the light. And yet, he still chose the darkness. He still chose to go his own way, to do things his own way. And what a terrifying thought. What a terrifying thought for all of us that by our own decisions, we can actually destroy our lives. Yeah? But, and here's the hope here, we need not fear darkness. We need not fear darkness. Even if it's um, a consequence of our own stupid decisions. We need not fear darkness. Because notice this, notice this. The hour of Jesus where he reveals his glory started when? Started when? It started at night. It started in darkness. The Jesus, the light of the world, began to fully reveal who he was, began to fully reveal his glory in, in his ordeal towards the cross. And all of that, as the light of the world, starts at night. In this moment, it starts with a painful betrayal of a friend. And so what am I trying to say? That in the midst of darkness, light can actually begin. Amen? That's why John says this in the very start of the Gospel of John. He says, the light shines in darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So the truth is this. You may be faced with dark times in your life right now, but through Christ, your crisis can actually give birth to your greatest victories in life. Amen. There was once a pastor in Nairobi, Africa, and her name is Terry Gobanga. 
on her wedding day, she goes out of her hotel just to do some last-minute errands when she was attacked, kidnapped, brought to a car, gang-raped, stabbed, and from a speeding vehicle, was thrown out of the car, left almost dead on her wedding day. Good thing somebody saw her, brought her to the hospital to be treated, but there she survived, praise God, but there she found out the devastating news that because of the stab wound that went all the way deep into her womb, she can no longer bear children. Now, thanks be to God, a few months after her fiancé, in spite of all of that, decided to push through with the wedding the marriage, and so they got married. But one month after their marriage, they were sleeping at night in their home when their heater began to emit carbon monoxide. And it was so much that there was intoxication, and because of this accident, the husband did not make it. The husband died. And that triggered a spiraling down in Terry's life. She really was in darkness. She was in pain. She was devastated and disappointed with God and at life itself. She wanted to give up all, all together. And she, she even said, I'm never going to get married anymore. But in this dark season of Terry's life, there was a friend who consistently and just faithfully kept showing up in her house, in her life, to encourage her, to help her heal, to help her go through all that she was feeling. His name is Tony. And eventually, they fall in love. And eventually, they got married. And a few months after their marriage, they find out miraculously that Terry is now pregnant, even if the doctor said that she could not bear children anymore. She was pregnant, and eventually, she bore a baby girl, and then four years later, another baby girl. Praise God. With all that she went through in life, she decided to write it all in a book entitled Climbing Out, or sorry, Crawling Out of Darkness. And it is, she did it because she wanted to give hope for people to rise again in the midst of tragedies and troubles of life. And then she eventually also founded a ministry that helps out rape victims or rape survivors to help them in their healing and their wholeness. And then by God's grace, she also found it in her heart to forgive her attackers. She said this. Can we show them? She said, It wasn't easy, but I realized I was getting a raw deal by being upset with people who don't care. My faith also encourages me to forgive and not repay evil, or not repay evil with evil, but with good. And so, my friends, you may be going through deep darkness in your life right now. Someone may have wronged you or harmed you or evil may have been done to you. But let me just tell you this, that darkness cannot and will not defeat the light. That what was intended for evil, God can turn for your good. Yes? And that even in the midst of your brokenness, even in the midst of your darkness, get ready because that is where God's light will shine the brightest. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So first event, foot washing. Second event, the betrayal of Judas, and then third event, Jesus gives his final message. Don't worry, I'm about to close. This was, I think, for Jesus, the last time where he will have his apostles gathered into a table. So, medyo marami siyang sinabi. He had a lot to say. Para niyang huling habilin to. And his speech was pretty long. It ranges from John 14 to 17, and he says three crucial important things, or does three things. One, he gives an encouragement. Two, he gives a call. And then third, he gives a prayer. And these are the three things that I believe, whatever circumstance or situation or season that we all are in, no matter where it is, this is something that we need. So number one, 
Jesus encourages you to hope. That in the, in the midst of the times of darkness and crisis, Jesus says this, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? Jesus says. So for some people, they interpret this passage thinking that Jesus was talking about heaven. But if you look at the original Greek and you study it, you will see that yes, it could mean heaven, but actually Jesus was pertaining to the reality of God dwelling in us. And I tell you, that is true to this very day, that God dwells in us right here, right now, whenever we put our faith and our trust in Him. And so perhaps, I don't know what you're going through right now, the trials, the struggles, the problems you're facing, but Jesus is inviting you. Jesus is telling you, trust me as I live in you. Amen? Second thing that Jesus did is that Jesus calls you, calls us to obey. Because trust equals obedience. Jesus asks us, do not be like Judas who departed from my love. Rather, he says this, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments and you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. So how? How do we remain in His love? We follow Him. I want to encourage you, my friends. Live the life that God has given you on His terms, not on yours. Obey Him especially His command to love one another as I have loved you and to be foot washers to the people around us every single day. And then lastly, number three, Jesus prays for us. I don't know if you know this, but in the Gospel of John, Jesus prays specifically for you and for me, All right? And I'll, I'm not kidding about this. He says this, I pray not only for them. Can we have the passage? And he means the apostles there. But then he says this, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. And who is that? That's us. For us who believed in the apostles' work down the generations, Jesus was already praying for us then. And so he says, so that they may be all, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. So Jesus prays that we become one, one with the Father and one with one another. And this has been his desire all the way from the beginning in, in creation, in Genesis. He has always envisioned and desired humanity to be in unity, to dwell in unity. And he showed us how. He showed us that we must become foot washers. See, unless we follow in Jesus' self-giving, oneness won't happen. Unity will not happen. And that's why Jesus had to do it first, had to show us first. See, because His foot washing really was a symbol of His total self-giving on the cross. And that is what we are called to live by. Now, as I was preparing for this message, I was just led by the Holy Spirit to add something to just what I said, to what I just said. And it is this thought, this idea that foot washing 
is not just about sacrifice or service to our family, to our spouse, to the people around us. It's not just about being selfless. But perhaps foot washing also means forgiveness. So imagine mo, hinugasan niya yung paa ni Judas na alam na niya would betray him. So perhaps in that moment, he was already doing that out of love and out of forgiveness for Judas. He was willing to forgive him. The problem is Judas didn't open himself up to that grace, to that forgiveness. But he was doing that already out of forgiveness. So foot washing also means forgiveness. So I want you to think today, who is that person in your life that perhaps you need to forgive or that person in your life who you need to seek forgiveness from. So, to fulfill the unity that Jesus was praying for here, perhaps it's time for you to forgive that person or to seek forgiveness from that person or maybe even to forgive yourself Maybe it's time for healing, for reconciliation with that person and for the mercy of God to wash over us all. Amen. Amen. I'm going to close this talk today by bringing you into a moment of prayer. I'm going to be washing the feet of some of our feasters today. So can we have our whole setup here and all of them to come on stage? And as I'm washing their feet, I want you to pray. To pray for the person whose feet I'm washing, but also this, to pray for our feast community. To pray for our relationships, your relationships. To pray for our service together. To pray for the future of our feast to pray for unity. And I'm doing this today perhaps as an expression, as an example for all of us as Christ followers to be foot washers. To reverse the social structure that for us who are blessed and perhaps privileged to be the one to let go of our authority and serve selflessly, to serve sacrificially. So would you join me in this moment of prayer? Yes? So together, let's come in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's all rise. Can I have every eyes closed? Why don't you lift up your hands and surrender to the Lord? Allow me to lead you in prayer. Lord Jesus, in the midst of all the darkness, the difficulties I face, I give my life to you. I choose the light and not the darkness, God. And I want to follow you. I want to obey you. So I answer your call over my life to love you with all my heart, to serve you with all that I've got to love your people selflessly, sacrificially, Lord. 
I lay down my life, God. If it means to die to myself just as you died for me on the cross, Lord, I will. I commit to this, God. I will live for your glory. Live for your name, Jesus. My life is yours. Use me. Use me, Lord, to be a light to the world, to serve your people, to love your people, God. Whatever it takes, we worship you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah.